The Ink and Paint Club podcast is intended for mature audiences only. So don't tell your parents! Listener discretion is advised. You're listening to the Ink and Paint Club podcast, your weekly home for animation reviews and discussions. Alrighty, everybody, welcome to another episode of the Ink and Paint Club podcast. I'm your host, JD, as per usual, and uh, we, we we let Kyle off the hook this week, because he don't know shit about anime. <laughs> uh, but joining me is one half of our general, or usual, anime crew, Darren's back. Yeah, I'm pretty consistent with the, with the anime. When the anime's around, I'm here. You're our anime expert. <laughs> I'll take it. There you go. And uh, he hasn't been on the podcast a while, but uh, Patrick's back. Yes, I am back. Pretty much making the uh, the other half being the video gamer. So it kind of makes us there you go. one nice little happy family bunch here tonight. Or today. Yeah. Or yeah. Uh, but yeah, so speaking of video games, we are going to be talking about a video game anime. More specifically, the... 90s Fire Emblem anime, which is something I had always heard a rumor of, uh, but had never actually watched prior to doing this review. So um, we'll talk about that today. Um, but before I w- we get into that, I kind of want to just ask you guys briefly what your um, experience is with the Fire Emblem series. Um, Darren, you're the guy with the, the YouTube channel, so I'll ask you first. Well, it's it's all a lie. I've never played a Fire Emblem game in my life. I've never I'm been on a shocked. Fire Emblem podcast before. It's all a lie. All a big sham. I'll just somehow uh, I I'll do not down believe the that now. in the slightest. I feel betrayed, honestly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've been a fan since 2003 with the release of uh, the GBA Fire Emblem game in North America, which is technically Fire Emblem Seven, right? In uh, the grand chronology of the series, and I've been a fan ever <laughs> since. Then I've made it my mission to uh play all of them which up to this point i believe i have with the exception of like a really weird uh they did it for like the satella view for the uh super famicom where they oh, released yeah. like bite-sized episodes i never got to that one for obvious reasons yeah i don't but, even know uh, if you can get those anymore I, the roms exist but i don't think they're translated and i think mm. they're you have to go to some uh, pretty suspicious locations to uh acquire mm. them yeah Right. <laughs> but as far as Fire Emblem goes, I'm deep in there. I'm a co-host occasionally on a Fire Emblem podca- podcast called Emblemcast. Oh. And on my own personal YouTube channel, The Gaming Pilgrimage, I've reviewed up to now all of the North American uh, released Fire Emblem games, the exception of the latest one, which I am uh, in the midst of working on. Uh, uh, Shadows of Valentia. <laughs> or Valentia. Right? Yeah, e- yeah, Echoes. Which is a great game, by the way. Super good. I'm, like, stuck in it. I got frustrated. Hmm. Maybe we can... Just grind. It's one of those games you can do that yeah, now. Maybe, yeah, maybe we can try to help you uh, figure out where to go from there after the podcast, then. Kind of give you some tips and tricks. Yeah. <laughs> right. There you go. Uh, but, Patrick, what what is your history with the series? Um... For me, I always kind of liked how, you know, those tactical RPGs of using, you know, moving units around and managing your resources and whatnot. I think before that, it was mm-hmm. Advanced Wars that kind of got me interested oh, yeah. into that sort of feel. Both the first one and the second one that got released for the GBA. Um, That's the reason we got Fire Emblem in the first place, because of the success of those games. Pretty mm-hmm. much. And then it was one of my friends who, unfortunately, he did not have the first one that came out for the Game Boy Advance, but he came, but he had the next one which was the Sacred Stones. And he actually let me mm-hmm. borrow that physical copy for a couple of months before I finally beat it. And to be honest, nice. I still think, in my opinion, that one was probably my favorite out of the entire series. I still like the rest of the other Fire Emblems I've played, which is Awakening, uh, Fates, all three of them, as well as Shadows of Valentia. Um, I even mm-hmm. have the DS version, which I believe was a remake of the original, but yeah, Shadow Dragon. Yeah, haven't never really touched that one that much. I never really played mm-hmm. as much as I would have liked. Um, I gotcha. Well, I'm going to give you a hot tip, Patrick. Mm. If you ever go on your your Twitter account, which is now which, what's your Twitter account? <laughs> I'll link that after the podcast. I finally started. Yeah, we'll, we'll put we'll put it in the, the description. Material. But uh, I was going <laughs> to say, never on the internet 
tell people that Shadow Dragon is only okay or only a pretty decent game because they'll get really upset at you. Oh, I'm, I'm, oh, but I'm, I'm all about you know making controversy and saying like I think this is better than this. No, well, are, my are they, friend, you have a lot of fun ahead. Oh, trust me. Are, are they? I get. I, are they gonna be? Are they gonna be normal angry or like recent Rick and Morty fans angry? Uh, I don't know latter. if much can top that until <laughs> something else. I have a quite funny like that comes along. It's gonna be the latter. <laughs> yeah, but uh, um, y- you would be surprised how upset people will get when you tell them a Fire Emblem game is a little easier than others. Right. I still let people get mad at I, me because I still think Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood is better than the original. That it it is <laughs> that yeah I I've, people, I've actually heard that from are, a lot of people yeah, that it's better. Granted, it does help at least in the first third of the se- of the Brotherhood if you've at least seen the mm-hmm. original. If you see see right. the original first, then watch Brotherhood. Brotherhood is still the better mm. version, but you need to catch up everything because it goes. Right. They're both great. The first fifteen but, uh, or Brotherhood's so, well, clearly better. The first fifteen episodes in Brotherhood kind of goes very quickly, just kind of meshes through all the storyline. As if it expects that you already know what's going on. Mm-hmm. So, and I feel um, just like our little topic of the evening tonight. Uh, this lovely, lovely OVA kind of rushes through everything. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we we can get into it now. Um, so we kind of mentioned that uh, you know we we got over here in America in the in the states we got. Our for our first Fire Emblem, which is technically number seven, like what, like two thousand three, I think is when it came so. out. Yeah, two thousand two, um, two thousand three, and that that was supposedly supposedly the West's first exposure to Fire Emblem. However, apparently, about six or seven years earlier, we and we actually got a uh, two episode Fire Emblem OVA over here, and um, I watched it today, and. Uh... Um, <laughs> so can we please just give appreciation to the cover of the box art for North America that it had where it says one young hero, a legendary sword, the forces of evil are in big trouble. And you never see the sword. Uh, nope. You never, ever see the sword. <laughs> the falchion's nowhere in this. He only gets an end game. Come on. Uh, so, um, so basically my understanding of it is that. Uh, the anime is, OVA is an adaptation of the first game, Shadow Dragon. Um, Darren, you've played Shadow Dragon, I assume? Yes. Um, how close is this, exactly? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, it has the overall same backstory. It has Marth, you know, who loses his kingdom after they are suddenly betrayed and a combination of the Shadow Dragon, who is now working with Garnif, the evil sorcerer, kind of works together, overthrows his kingdom. Mm-hmm. He's forced to retreat and go to Talius, I believe is the name of the country he hides in for a solid portion of his life prior to the events of uh, both the game and the OVA. So that's mm-hmm. all consistent. You see a lot of the same characters that he would see it in like the early chapters of that Fire Emblem game. So all that lines up. It it, it does have some uh, departures for how events are started and how uh, he interacts with some of the characters because they don't really you don't really get to see a lot of that in both the original Fire Emblem and Shadow Dragon. There's not a lot of characters talking mm-hmm. to each other. Gotcha. Um... Well, I I'll say one thing, Darren. Your your explanation of the plot there is a lot better than uh, the OVAs because <laughs> if you end up watching this, listener, um, prepare for like a two minute info dump at the beginning of this, and I have no idea what that guy said. Uh, I think a lot because he's like though, the kingdom of this is attacking the kingdom of that, and with the god of this, and is like these are a lot of names I'm never gonna remember. I remember, <laughs> and the funny part is they'll never be brought up again, really. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um so yeah ba- basically i mean this feels like it's it's the beginning of a longer running anime but it's the first two episodes and that's all there is of it um because you got the first episode where uh marth or as he's called in this mars because they hadn't uh given him official english name yet uh part where he's you know in another kingdom uh, after his has been taken over and kind of dealing with that. And the second episode is they're rescuing some kind of 
princess princess priestess person um and yeah that's about it <laughs> i believe this covers the first three to four chapters of the original right. of the original game slash shadow dragon mm-hmm. yeah, which so you only get those events of like a game that's like it's, i think <clears throat> 25 chapters long for right. reference yeah so the, it it, it kind of feels like not really a cliffhanger, but kind of a cliffhanger in the sense that like the OVA ends with them looking off in the distance like, all right, we're going to go do this thing. And you never see them go do that thing. Nope. <laughs> um, just gonna just, you, you wonder, like, even after to this day, are they still just standing there on that cliffside staring at the sunset again? It's like it's been 20 years. Why I mean, are probably. we not doing anything? <laughs> <laughs> to be continued until 2008. <laughs> it never happens. Never gonna happen. <laughs> um, so, I, I guess we can just go around and like say what our general uh, opinions of this were. Um, what what did Darren? Had you seen this before? Because I think this is the first time Patrick or I had ever seen this. I actually saw this a few years ago as it was just someone uploaded on YouTube, and mm-hmm. that was what probably during my. Uh, peak not i don't know if i'd say my peak like interest in fire emblem but is definitely a time where i was like i was reading various uh side story manga based mm-hmm. on other games and whatnot so i was like looking to different media adaptations of fire emblem and i just saw on youtube just hey fire emblem the anime <laughs> and that's how i watched it and was uh probably as underwhelmed as you guys mm. okay <laughs> I, th- I think that is kind um, of the word that kind of describes this at this entire OVA is just it's underwhelming. Yeah, period. that's a good word for it. Um, I don't think it's yeah. I don't think it's god awful though. I think the animation is passable. It's okay given I, the time period. I mean, I mean, yeah, it's it's very typical mid '90s anime. Um, because I think th- I think this was made in '95. I don't think America got it dubbed um, till '97. It was actually or something. yeah. It was 1996 when it came out in Japan, and it wasn't until okay. a year later um, when it finally came out into the states and it was dubbed. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's. I mean, like Patrick said, yes, the animation it's pretty good. Uh, the fight, the, all the fight scenes and stuff, it's pretty well done. Um, you know, I, I kind of have an affinity for that old kind of, like, um, grainy, like, done-on-cells kind of animation that, you know, right. uh, the 90s anim- anime had. Um, I will say the acting in this is, like, god-awful, even <laughs> uh, for mid-90s anime. Yeah, it's... <laughs> the acting is so bad. Yeah, and I had the, I had the unfortunate pleasure-slash-displeasure, whichever you would think, um, of both mm-hmm. listening to both the English dubbed version and then the Japanese version with just the subtitles. Oh wait, so you watched this twice? Yes, I infor- <laughs> I unfortunately had to watch this twice just so I could get a good feel for it. And I mean, you didn't have to, but I yeah, mean... I'd say the Japanese ones definitely outclasses the English one by right. a, a very large march. <laughs> I don't know. It yeah. also big, features but... a lot of the uh, voice actors who would, in Japanese at least, the voice actors who'd continue to voice the characters, like uh, Navarre and Marth, are, have always mm-hmm. played those characters, and every time they've shown up and made an appearance. Like in the Smash Brothers series, mm-hmm. Marth is still voiced by the same actor who portrayed him in this uh, anime. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Although, well, that's pretty cool. Although, I think you can kind of blame some of the terrible dubbing to. Uh, the lovely, lovely publishing company that was kind of responsible for bringing this OVA to the United States. So, oh, yeah. if you if you ever remember, you know, getting anime back at that time, like either getting it in VHS form, either from your local anime club or your video rental store, you would see those tiny three little letters in the bottom corner of the box: A D V. A D V. A D V films. Now, granted, they did release and publish a lot of actually really good anime that were English dubbed. So, say for example, some that you may recognize like Azumanga Daio, Excel Saga, Noir, Robotech, Sailor Moon, and as well mm-hmm. as the big Gainax one itself, Neon Genesis Evangelion, was released by ADV mm-hmm. uh, in its hmm. English dubbed form. But... Hmm. 
kind of until they brought over everything. Pretty much. Yeah, the funny thing I found out mediocre. about ADB, kind of just researching up on them, they started in 1992 in Texas, of all places. <laughs> Texas. Okay. That is not what not you... When you think anime, you, that, you don't anime. think Texas, you know? No. But... Our children want the Japanese, Japanese cartoons. Animes. <laughs> animes. They want damn mangas and watching damn the They want to see their animals. drawn titties. <laughs> that Japan anime. Yeah, but it was just a company that was started by three guys who really loved anime and uh, comic books and all sorts of things like that. And I, from what I understand, the founder of ADV Films is still in business. I think he works for a different company now. Um, hmm. Yeah, because isn't ADV defunct by now? Uh, yeah, it had some uh, decline in business around the mid two thousands due to low sales. Which at that time, I think that was because it was less DVD, less VHS, more DVD, and it was becoming a little bit mm-hmm. easier to access anime now um, and get all yeah. of it. So. And I mean, that was like I think that was around the time that, like Funimation was really starting to uh, come up. So you also had the power of the internet starting to really take its also form, that. So that mm-hmm. kind of was killing its sales, and eventually. 2009 it closed its doors for good mm, but yeah if you ever think bad english dubbing or just awkward conversations or just just overall just weird english dubbing adv is usually who you look towards <laughs> yeah. well i mean it seemed like in the 90s especially um i mean it's a little more controlled now and um, like obviously uh dubbing and stuff has gotten a lot better oh yeah um, but it seemed like in the 90s, like, companies like ADV would just grab any and all uh, animes they could from Japan and just, like, kind of hastily throw them together, like, just get it out there, throw it out there, and just, like, throw as much out there as you can to see what sticks. Yeah, um, and kind of... So you could probably pick a lot of these shows up for nothing, so... Yeah, and kind of in the terms of the video game crash of 83, it's just, you fill, you saturate the market with so much, it's kind of hard to, to ascertain which ones are actually good through the rest of the garbage mm-hmm. that they toss out. Right. But, um, yeah, so, I, I don't know. Um, kind of getting back to, uh, <laughs> the Fire Emblem anime. Um, I don't know, it's, it's weird seeing something like this because, um, I mean, it's got the Nintendo copyright at the end. Um, so I'm wondering, like, if Nintendo, how much they were involved in the dubbing of this, if at all. Um, yeah, that, and it, that I kind of questioned that as well when I saw that at the end. Is like, how much did Nintendo actually get involved with this, if at all? Right. Well, mm-hmm. by watching and listening to this, I can. I think I can safely assume they didn't really have uh, much of an impact at all, <laughs> other than just right. slapping their copyright on it. So they literally just saying, bucks. "Okay, yeah, bring this over." Yeah, and I mean, this is years before uh, Fire Emblem would go quote unquote unquote mainstream in America. Um, so this is probably like this is some lesser known franchise from Nintendo. No one in America knows what it is. Let's just bring it over and see what it does. Um, they probably thought at the time they would never bring Fire Emblem over. Oh, I'm sure. Um, I mean, like you said, the only reason we got it over is because they took a, a chance on Advance Wars, which, I mean, if you look at Advance Wars, it's got more of an American appeal than Fire Emblem does because it's more, has kind of more of a Western feel to it in terms of uh, art style and such, but Fire Emblem is very anime <laughs> by its, on its own uh, <laughs> it's, anyway. It definitely kind of yeah. relies on some of the tropes of anime and fantasy at the time when it was coming out. Which, I mean, I've I've grown to appreciate with the few games that I have played of the Fire Emblem series and um, all that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's weird watching this anime and seeing characters that, like, you kind of have a peripheral knowledge of. I mean, I've I kind of know some stuff from Shadow Dragon in sense of like who the characters are. Um, so it's, it's weird seeing them kind of animated and like this and, you know, having a uh, talk and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, one thing I, I did want to kind of, uh, I, I'm kind of curious about, um, uh, I, I, they did play the Fire Emblem, like, actual theme song, like, during the credits and stuff. Um, Darren, you probably would be a better person to ask about this. Um, did you notice if any of the other, like, popular music popped up during this at all? 
Uh, not that I recall. I think the main theme is probably the only fanfare I recognize. It, mm-hmm. It's possible the music could be like significantly remixed, but I didn't really catch any just watching it. Gotcha. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, the one thing that they did really hold over is the character designs, which pretty much are one to one with the actual original game art it doesn't Mm -hmm. look like the shadow dragon art because it was done by a different artist years later but if you go back and look at the artwork for fire emblems one and three pretty much spot Mm -hmm. on pretty much is one to one yeah oh yeah Um, which is super generic 90s anime art yeah Uh, i mean (laughs) it still it still looks okay it like that was one of the few things i will give this anime it doesn't look bad no yeah i like I like the character designs. I mean, like you said, Darren, it's pretty generic 90s anime uh, style. But you know what? I have a certain nostalgia for that kind of stuff. Um, it's good comfort food. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's comfort food. I mean, um, I like, you know, Marth and his weirdo little man skirt and his big flowy <laughs> hair. Yeah, uh, that's what he had in the game. Oh, don't forget at the, um, what was it, like in the first five minutes of the first episode, uh... Marth joins many other whiny male protagonists and shouting out someone's name, going, Eeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
Yeah. So it, I mean, it's interesting watching this in like an adaptation of a game and just seeing how they just carried these themes over, uh, over the last 20 some odd years. I don't know how old Fire Emblem is. I think it's like 30 years old now or something like that. I think it's just shy of that. I think it, the first game came out in uh, 1990. Yes. And okay. April yeah. 20th, so it's... 1990 with the latest release being back in April 20th. Once again. Uh, yeah. This, this year, year. So, 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 uh, yeah, it's getting up there. Um, which makes me wonder if, uh, you know, if they're going to do something for, cause Nintendo has been getting better about like celebrating the anniversaries of their main flagship series. And fire emblem seems to be like one of their top, uh, series because I've noticed in the last couple of years, they're just going all in on, fire emblem because basically after awakening did gangbusters they're like all right we're gonna make a mobile game and we're gonna keep putting out games we're making a warriors game we're making a game for the switch and all the characters in smash brothers there's a trading card game there's a trading card game (laughs) it's japan everything has a trading card game oh god (laughs) <laughs> There's even DLC in uh, Fates where you can get characters from uh, Cypher and you can recruit but them. Why? Oh, why? Because Japan. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Get another character. I, there, yeah. There's already so many characters in Fates. That was one of the reasons why I liked Shadows of Valentia. Is because there's not that oh, many sorry, characters. Oh, sorry. Uh, I meant Shadows of Valentia. It's for Shadows of Valentia, oh. the DLC. Mm, they already have enough well. characters. There's already plenty <laughs> yeah. enough characters in Shadows of Valentia. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't have to be like um, Fates where they literally throw you... 30 people in the final game as well as don't forget all the children too it's like there's too Aww. many people you might as well but it just... makes the final fight so easy <laughs> yeah the game even on the highest difficulty the game becomes super easy if you just stick with the classic with i've actually with never i haven't work. i actually haven't finished fates yet because echoes came out and i'm like god damn it i gotta play this and then i started playing echoes and I'm on the last campaign of Fates. I'm in Revelation, but I haven't finished it yet. So, one of, one of these days, I finished Awakening though. It's fine. <laughs> um, so there is something I want to get into after this, but um, is there anything else you guys want to say about the OVA? Um, I have definitely seen far better cobbled together anime, um, and OVAs even from that time period. I mean, come on, like I said, this was the time when you had. Uh, Gundam, Robotech, Neon Genesis. There were a lot of no, really Thursday. good animes, despite you know, th- you know the the lack the the limitations at, of the time. This kind of just shows something that was animated very well, but everything else was cobbled together. So, in my mm-hmm. opinion, the animation style was very nicely done. I thought the sound effects and everything were okay for the most part. the The three things that kind of hurt it the most is definitely the rushed story, the terrible dialogue from the characters and the and the lack of, of really good memorable music except for the theme which plays through the credits and that's it right so i think gotcha. it's those three three things that kind of holds it back it's just it's underwhelming it's not amazing yeah. it's not god awful <laughs> good lord knows i've seen far worse anime than this but this is definitely <laughs> kind of in that slightly cringe territory so if you okay. like that sort of thing, it's something I would recommend checking out. But sure. I personally do not see myself going out of my way to find it on VHS or DVD. Right. <laughs> Darren, what about you? I'd say this OVA kind of exists as like a novelty item to kind of see the past in a way. Kind of mm-hmm. like a historic lens of viewing how Fire Emblem was back in the 90s and how the adaptations of it were like if you compare it to some of the more modern manga or other uh, side material it's night and day Mm -hmm. and i think it's pretty much just novelty of hey there's this weird adaptation they did of fire emblem that went nowhere and it it almost makes you wonder if anyone at any point had like faith in the project (laughs) yeah that i was kind of worried about that as well was like this episode two is an early call to make for not continuing it yeah um yeah i mean i kind of share the sen- sentiments with you guys i mean patrick you pretty much put it how i feel it's it's kind of underwhelming um and like you said darren it's kind of a cool it's also kind of a cool novelty you get to see the the beginnings of the series and getting these characters come to life in animation so it's cool for that but 
like you guys saying, like we've been saying this all time, the dialogue's not that great. Um, the dub seems kind of rushed. The plot seems really rushed. I mean, it feels like the beginning of a longer story that they decided two episodes in, they're like, all right, we're just going to cut our losses. It's pretty much like if you crammed the first season of Naruto together in three episodes and then that's it. Nothing else. We're done. Kind of. Time to go home. Um, I don't. If I could give. Go ahead. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, you go, go ahead, man. I was just going to say, if I could give credit to one thing, it's that the original Fire Emblem game did not have any major dialogue scenes between other <sighs> characters, like supporting characters in the main cast. They'd have mm -hmm. maybe a line when you recruit them, and that's all they say. Mm -hmm. And well, they, yeah. I think the team did a pretty decent job at giving some characters like Navarre, who really did not have like a, a significant role in the story of uh, the original game, at least they gave him something. So it makes him more interesting than just the cool swordsman who says one line and then is recruited. Right. So I, I, I appreciate how it's kind of like how in Shadows of Valentia, a game where there were no support conversations prior, they added that extra level and actually fleshed out the characters. And they don't do that for everybody, but at least some people got that treatment and they were able to pull material out of nothing. Yeah. I mean, you're dealing with a 90, uh, you're, you're trying to adapt a 1990 NES game into an anime. And uh, you're right. I think for what they had to work with, they did all right. Um, I don't, Given what, I, what I'm presented with, I don't know if it's the kind of show that had they made more episodes, if I'd want to keep watching, um, maybe because of my growing affinity for Fire Emblem, maybe, uh, maybe it would have gotten better. I don't know. Um, so it's kind of hard to say um, if if I would have kept watching this, had it, had it kept going. Um, but yeah, so there you go, guys. That's our that's our thoughts on the OVA. If you want to check it out, it's all on YouTube. Right. Um, um, it's not great quality. No, there's actually but... one more thing I kind of want to just kind of uh, add in there too, JD, if it's all right. Sure. Um, if you, I mean, being kind of more of an anime fan myself, may, um, I'm not sure maybe more than uh, our friend here or not. <laughs> maybe, a, maybe a little <laughs> more than Darren. I don't know, but I, I'd say equal more or less. I don't know, uh, man. I watched Dragon Ball once. Dragon Ball. <laughs> Just that one time. Um, but for those who are really big fans into anime and you like that kind of setting of kind of like in this fantasy world, um, video game references, um, get this or that, um, there are two animes that I definitely highly recommend checking out. Uh, one is called Grimgar of Fantasy and Ash, which you can find on Funimation Now's website. And the hmm. other would be Log Horizon from Crunchyroll. Both of them are there in their Japanese uh, subtitles. Both of them kind of follow a very similar path. Um, pretty much a group of people who suddenly find themselves in a fantasy world, no idea of how to get out. The difference is Grimgar is more of a real-life fantasy world, while Log Horizon is they're trapped in an MMO. And no, it's not, yeah. it's not Sword Art Online. It's <laughs> not a dot .hack sign. It's neither yeah, one of those. I was, it is I was something gonna, different. I'll, I was going to say, um, I saw, uh, like, a, a, a just like, hey, this is on the, on the service. Uh, we, we were looking for stuff to watch while we were on a plane a couple months ago. And I saw Log Horizon because it's, like, the only anime title on there. And I read the description. like, this sounds a lot like Sword Art. <laughs> but it's good to know it's different. Yeah, I, thankfully, yeah. it's not only different. I think it's better than Sword Art Online. Okay. Because it actually well, feels like you're actually in an MMO. So if you like that sort of thing, if you like fantasy stuff, if you like seeing, you know, anime kind of like that, those are the two that I would recommend. You okay. know, it's a good thing that you think it's better than Sora Online because you're recommending it. That's my well, that's my recommendation, <laughs> is both of those. I've, I've seen both of them feelings and I like if you're it. like, no, Sora Online is better, but I'm recommending this to you instead. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've seen both series, and to be honest, I'm, I'm not impressed with SAO. I'm not. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. So, um, yeah, go check those out, guys. Those, um, if if this kind of setting strikes you fancy, um, there is one last thing I want to do with you guys before we sign off here. Um, sure. Just kind of um, a dumb thing. So, since this is an adaptation of Shadow Dragon, I'm curious as to like if you could pick any other game. 
in the Fire Emblem series to adapt into an anime, which one would you want? Fire Emblem Thracia 776. Bam, done. <laughs> okay. I'll provide some context uh, to Yeah, my sell, answer, sell us on this. most people listening, it just sounds like I said gibberish. <laughs> I mean, I know what you said, but yes, please please yes. do elaborate. This is the fifth Fire Emblem game. It came out on the... It's the last Super Famicom game to ever come out in Japan. I believe it came out in like 1990 and then... Or 1999 and then like 2000 they had a re-release of it. Jesus, they're but, still uh, making super SNES games, then. Yeah, it's a weird prequel sequel to Fire Emblem Four: Genealogy of the Holy War, which is mm-hmm. also a good candidate to have adapted ad- an adaptation for. And it follows a very political setting, unlike other Fire Emblem games, where it's more based on the high fantasy elements. This is more based around like uh, political families and countries basically plotting against one another very similar to what you'd see in a show like game of thrones Hmm. and i think that type of like of narrative focus those games have would really benefit an anime adaptation versus a lot of the really gameplay oriented fire emblem games like shadow dragon isn't heavy in the story department and i don't think it really benefit from an anime so i understand why you wouldn't want to go past the second episode because you're pretty much making the story as you go and to some extent, I think other games of the series, like Awakening, I think you can make an anime, but it's pretty... Like, what do you do for battles? How many times do you show the characters fighting? Yeah. So, so I think a more politically driven Fire Emblem game would be really interesting. And I'd also love to see how they handle really uh, complicated topics, like child sacrifices or incestuous <laughs> relationships and oh all sorts of things going on in the sidelines. <laughs> or oh, cult personalities slowly behind the scenes taking over a country Ooh. stuff like that Jeez, um yeah that actually sounds pretty interesting i'd be down for that and they're also insane the fire emblem thracia 776 is also an insanely difficult game so i think <laughs> having a form of it where you can experience a really cool story without having to for some people go through a game that they may not ever finish right hmm yeah that, that sounds pretty that sounds interesting um That'd be good. I think I think that would work really well, especially with Game of Thrones. Like you said, it's Game of Thrones esque. I think with that kind of popularity, I think that would might uh, appeal to some people. Hmm. Um. Patrick, what what would what would you suggest? Um. It's kind of difficult to follow with his choice, honestly. From the sounds <laughs> of it, it does sound like it would make a really good adaptation. You know, given the time and the money for it. Um. Mm-hmm. If not for that one, I would probably still go with my favorite one, which was uh, which is the Sacred Stones. Mm-hmm. Honestly, don't have too much to say about it compared to uh, what he's said so far. But for the most part, I liked the game. I enjoyed the story. It didn't feel like it rushed through everything. It gave you time to understand what was going on and what was at stake. And the game was plenty lengthy enough. I think people complained that the they didn't like how the overworld was and that it was quote unquote too easy. That game was not easy. I died <laughs> hundreds of times in that stupid game. I was thankful when I finally beat it, but yeah, it, it has you know moments where it could really become a really great story. Nowadays, though, with most of the newer games from Awakening onward, with how the cutscenes work, it already could be kind of an anime. Maybe not. Yeah, they're, maybe they're... not Fates though, because of the whole just. I don't know. Just like having to like <laughs> having kids, like you know, being able to have kids and going back and forth and. People would be so upset well, that they didn't have their their oh so awesome relationship. You're right. Um, that's actually funny that you say that because I mean I personally have a very limited history with uh, Fire Emblem. I've only played Awakening onward, and I played a little bit of uh, Blazing Sword, like maybe the first five levels or whatever. Um, but honestly, I think if I had to pick out of the ones that I have knowledge of. I think Fates would probably be the one I'd want to go with um, only because I think it'd be really interesting if you basically every 12 ish episodes you reset. So you'd go through the the whole story of birthright, some kind of time warpy bullshit happens at the, at the end of the 12th episode and it just resets back to, to conquest and you just do that and just do that through like through all three times. That way you can show the story of all three of them 
um, and keep it all in one that continuity. Could like I'm sure they can come up with some kind of MacGuffin that would. That sounds more interesting that. than the core game story. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I think, uh, again, I haven't finished Revelation yet, so I don't know how uh, Revelation concludes. Um, Disappointingly. <laughs> so I've heard. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think if maybe they altered the story a little bit to maybe, like, when they uh, beat the... Oh, fuck, what's the king's guy's name again? Oh, um, uh, Garen. There you go, that guy. Garen. And they, they, when they when they beat him at the end of each storyline, some kind of time warpy bullshit happens, and it has to reset the world again. Right, um, like it's and it, like it's like it's not done in the proper way. He's not killed the right way, so he's not going to die. He's just going to be sealed away. So, and before he does, right, pull some magic yeah, power it, out of his ass that rewinds time. And I, th- I think it'd be kind of interesting. Like the first time it happens, it goes back. Like it, it drops you right at that point where it does the storyline split, where you're in the field with both families and corn just kind of comes back in and is like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> it would, it would make so, some good uh, story there. Like he would be one of the very few people that would still remember what just happened. Right. And it'd be kind of interesting for him to like have that weird, um, you know, like what the fuck just happened moment the first time it happens. And like, as you go through the second or you're going through the conquest line, uh, he's starting to piece it together, so that what happens when it resets the revelation line, he already knows how it, uh, what's going on. So he like he basically will just beelines through revelation. Although if it if um, fates does get turned into an anime, please please have Korn come up with a better reason to being able to recruit people other than I can't tell you, but you have to trust me because I'm a good person. Oh, God. That, like, please, that, that is so big, stupid. That was one of my biggest gripes with fates. It's like. The re- I, I do not believe that any of these people would just randomly pick up with you and just go along with you, even though you've given them no reason yeah. to. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, even in, in the Sacred Stones, there were several characters where technically, you know, you, you the only way to recruit them is with specific characters talking with them, and you don't know that unless you experiment. Not to mention, mm-hmm. if you kill them, yeah, you're not going to see them for the rest of the story. It's not like in Fates, where 90% of the characters... Whether you you know you defeat them or not, they may still end up being recruited regardless. So it's like, well, what, what yeah, what's the point be, of that? Yeah, they may be plot relevant. Yeah, um, they were, so, that's you know, the stuff. big question with fates. What was the point of that? <laughs> <laughs> I still liked it. Be- I don't it's know. It's a fun oh, game yeah, to play, I, no, but I, that story has I, more holes than a freaking bagel. I, I enjoyed I, it too, but it the, yeah, the story was just uh, it made me cringe. At just how, just like, I don't know, how dumb Corrin was and how dumb he thought, like, oh, people will follow me and join my army just because I said, f- you know, I I know the <laughs> truth, but I can't say it. I can't, like, just, like give a hint. Give some kind of meaning yeah. or an image or something. Draw something right. out. That way you're technically well, not saying it. Yeah, see, well, yeah. And I, I feel like I'm kind of conflicted. Um... Cause like I really like Awakening, cause that was the that was that was the game that finally got me into uh, Fire Emblem. Cause I tried playing Blazing Sword, couldn't do it. I think I played a maybe a level or two of Radiant Dawn on the Wii, couldn't do it. Awakening little, for what? It, Awakening for one. what? It, yeah, I know, right? Uh, whatever reason, Awakening was what got me into it. I can fully recognize that Awakening story is basic, um, and there's not a lot of nuance to it. Uh, I think I like the characters in Awakening better than Fates. Fates, I do like the characters. I think a lot has a good design. Um, I don't like that they got rid of the overworld in Fates. Um, I liked walking the overworld in Awakening, and I'm glad they put it back in Echoes. Well, um, let me push up my Fire Emblem glasses there. <laughs> Fire Emblem Gaiden, which Shadows of Valentia is a remake of, first introduced the overworld map concept into Fire Emblem. There you go. And it is only one of five games in the Fire Emblem series that actually offers an open world to do open battles. The other ones are Fire Emblem Awakening, Fire Emblem Fates, Shadows of Valencia, which is the remake, and my favorite, the Sacred Stones. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's... Go ahead. I was going to say, as a fun alternative to this idea, I think a game that would actually work really well as an anime would be Path of Radiant slash Radiant Dawn, because hmm. there's a lot of characters that never got expanded upon and they have very little in, 
like dialogue and involvement in the story and seeing that expanded would be really neat and you would get to see the black knight animated which is always cool nice. yeah there you go and i think ike would probably make for a good leading character i think it's fa- it's fair to say everybody likes ike <laughs> yeah exactly he doesn't talk much but he's definitely that stoic kind of hero. yeah he, he's that like, he's he that kind of to. like kind of yeah, he's a brooding stoic character. I think he could. Eat, I think I could carry a series. Uh, as he a actually character. really isn't that brooding. Well, <laughs> like again, a lot of my knowledge of Fire Emblem comes like from Smash, Smash Brothers. Brothers yeah, so right. <laughs> probably not the where I should get for getting my information from. But yeah. <laughs> you know. right. we'll talk a little bit more after the podcast, though. Sure. Um, so yeah, um, unless there's anything else you guys got for today. Um, nothing else. I've kind of stated what I want, gave my recommendations for anime and stuff, but like I said, don't, in my opinion, don't see this anime. <laughs> Unless you really want to and you're curious, don't. Yeah, that, yeah. If if, if you're a diehard Fire Emblem fan, you've never watched this, I'd say give it a watch at least once, just to, just to see it. At the very least, put it on the background. There you go. That works. Cool. All right, guys. Well, thank you again for helping me out with this one. And uh, if you guys have watched the uh, the listeners, if you guys have watched this, uh, let us know. And hell, tell us what your fi- your favorite Fire Emblem game. Tell us why. Um, I I have basic bitch knowledge of Fire Emblem, so I could always use more things to play. Uh, but I think that does it for us this week. And I guess we'll catch everybody all next week. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Ink and Paint Club podcast. Be sure to subscribe to the channel so you can catch a new episode every week. Also be sure to follow us on our Facebook and Twitter so you can keep up with the show. Links are in the description. We'll see you next week.